All right, this video is gonna be carving the um, sound port for this grizzly bear themed mandolin. Um, been a long time coming. I'm gonna bite the bullet here. This video is more to be like a fly on the wall type video. Um, I'll, quick, I'll discuss things as I go, but it's more of just like actual process. So I have these two <coughs> gouge chisels I use. Um, these two files. Um, and then this is just an engraver I use for Pearl, um, but it'll be handy for this. A mechanical pencil. Um, I have a drill over there. And then um, a few years ago, I found a bear footprint in the mud, and so I poured um, plaster of Paris in it to preserve the footprint. So I'm gonna, I keep these kind of on the side here, um, just as a nice like visual reference to show depth variety. So, it might seem drastic, but I'm gonna take a drill to it first. So, um, when I do this, you gotta be careful of any blowout on the flip side, on the inside here. So, first, what I've done is I've already drawn kind of rough outline. And this is gonna be the main sound port area. Um, and then these kind of pads um, will also go through the soundboard and then where the claws are, I think those are just gonna be more of just like um, a little bit of like carved out spot. Um, some of that is gonna be dictated when I do the, the final voicing and string it up in the white. Um, the final profile shape thickness around the sound port um, will be done and things like these little accent claws. So that being said, full commitment here. basically just the holes there. I'm gonna work within, I'm a big fan of just drawing a lot of lines. And I think eventually if you draw enough lines, then they, they're weaved together enough where it kind of creates the, um, the shape and the flow that you're looking for. Obviously you could just have the one line approach and a, temp and a template, um, but for in this case where it's kind of like, when you look at these, Footprints, it's not like exact. They kind of flow as if you're stepping in the mud and stuff. So, and it depends on what angle you're looking at it too. Being aware of grain direction. You know, for the arch top, the grain's going down this way. And then for the recurve, it's going down this way too. So. Um, so there's several reasons why I would drill those holes in there. They're kind of like, um, like safety barriers. Like if you didn't have the holes, um, and you're carving and you hit some like grain blowout or some weird grain variation, which this has cause it's bear claw, Sitka spruce, you know, if you didn't have the holes there, just kind of keep going through the grain. So this way, if you do hit it, it kind of will force that momentum of however the wood was splitting to just kind of stop, you know, because there's a hole there. So it's not gonna go past that. So that's one reason.
here you can see um, let's see Sometimes when I think something's taking forever, not necessarily with this, I just think of how long it took for the Grand Canyon to be formed. And that was a much slower process. I mainly have that thought if I'm sanding something. Since it's kind of like the Grand Canyon, it's kind of like it's formed through sanding. And you'll get to the point where you do have the kerf lining, and I'm not sure yet if I'll leave that, or also how much I'll dip down into the rim. I'm gonna maybe just subtly, I don't know if that makes sense, in a very subtle way. I don't think subtly is a word. Anyway, um, I might just kinda dip down right into the rim, just to kinda add like a, I don't know, a palming over it effect. So what I'm doing with this is I'm actually anchoring it onto the table to create kind of like a, a pivot point for the sanding. So that's that's a trick you can use with the file. So just having it free floating around, anchor it down, and then you have a nice way to control the swing of the file. to note, I kind of have set up some safety nets for myself. I drew these lines and those are basically that correspond to the tone bars on the inside. So I know exactly where the boundary is. I don't want to be cutting or filing into the tone bars. And also um, I traced the bridge onto there too. So Just some visual hints.
while I'm doing this too, I'll also kind of assess the sound changes. Kind of let me press down. Still need some final carving, but it's just good to kind of collect those sensory type things. Um, I initially drew the first draft on this. I think I had like six paw prints. I was like, that doesn't look right. That's because it wasn't right. Okay. So, um, Here, um, this is what it looks like on the other side. I'm trying to create a curve, a nice round curve on all sides of it. I don't know, the camera might die soon, and if it does, I will have to recharge it and pick this up, but I'm gonna just kinda keep working until, until the camera dies. So if this stops suddenly, that's why. Just kind of scalloping the kerf lining. to try to make it look like a natural um just like a natural pressing in the ground or a natural paw print grabbing something um this reminds i'll tell this story from when i was younger as i'm working on this we had um chickens and llamas growing up and um one night my sister forgot to lock the chickens up and it was like 9.30 at night. 
And so I was asked to go lock them up. And when I got out there, there's a bear in the chicken coop. And there's about a dozen chickens with like their heads eaten off and they're all gutted. And a big mess. We only had like 13 chickens. I think we had one chicken left. My quick math tells me. Um, and the bear kept circling around the chicken coop while we we're putting the chicken guts into like a trash bag and the game warden had to come and it was a big ordeal. But it's super freaky. I remember stepping in the chicken coop and hearing the door clamp behind me. And then I see like the silhouette of this big bear butt like in the chicken coop itself. And fight or flight kicked in and I ran so fast out of the chicken coop. Anyway, that was a black bear. That wasn't a grizzly, but it was still pretty scary. The next month it came back and it killed one of our llamas. Um, and then it killed some of the neighbor's goats. So it was a pretty, it's a pretty uh, eventful summer. But oh, point of the story, um, the bear left this huge scratch mark on the chicken coop wall. And so I guess I'm trying to think about that too, of how it just kind of these claw marks. So, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I got a smaller drill bit. did five holes in these six that would have been really not great um, so for this what I'm gonna do is Just kind of creating an outline with each thing. Um, <clears throat> another file. Sorry, forgot some of the things that we need. Just a bunch more needle files and half moon files. Now for these, um, the pads, if you kind of look at the side profile, I don't know if you can really tell, but obviously it's gonna be slanted. It's not just gonna be a circle, right? So the depth of the pad, I'm gonna wanna try to mimic this curvature and the way it slopes. 
So where I drew it through, that, that's kind of, in a sense, the deepest part of the pad. And then everywhere else around the pencil, that's the part I'm gonna have it sloped, kind of sloping downward, or a downward scallop. And so just like, if I'm the ground and the bear is stepping on me, it's gonna be looking up and kind of seeing a, a bull like that. Um, I hope to never be stepped on by a bear though. I feel like that instantly means you did not make the correct life choices. If I don't get to the end of this recording and realize like my hand was covering up everything, it's just this like stupid long video of just like my hand covering everything up. slowly adding depth to each pen.
<laughs> what, I'll do, what I'll do here shortly is sand off the pencil marks and that way we'll have an actual, a good perspective of what it looks like. Hold it up to the, the light and kind of see what the, what it's starting to look like. Um, and then from there, that's why I'm not making them too big yet, is because then you can draw more um, lines and maybe shift things a little bit, depending on what type of like, I guess, motion you're trying to encapsulate. I'll still need to do the claws. Actually, let me just kind of put a little. I'm just using this engraver here. That's the profile. But...
this and see. So you can't really see the claw part yet, but this is more or less the shape without the pencil marks. And that kind of shows you what direction. So I think it definitely needs some more. Um, I'm gonna make this part a little bit more and then dip down into here more, but you can kind of see how it's starting to take shape. And again, that's why you don't wanna remove too much at one time because um, you want to still kind of have some wiggle room to adjust things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check with the client, see if this is kind of the direction um, they want it to go in. And then, uh, yeah, kind of keep on chipping away at it. <laughs> 